Guys, we live during a time where technology has allowed us to really enjoy the fruits of our labor. If you've got a decent job, you can get anything you need plus what you want. You know, whether it's going to the store or, you know, ordering online, I mean, there's just a lot of ways that we can get products that we need. But one thing about life is, is there's a lot of different facets to the areas, uh, whether it's food, water, or whether it's medical supplies. Uh, you know, guys, whether it's, you know, cleaning supplies, I mean, there's just a lot of things that go into true survival that we don't really realize because everything is so convenient. Uh, guys, with the current national crisis and a lot of people are sheltered in home and we're seeing a lot of shortages in certain areas, it's, it has a lot of people thinking. And it's the big reason why I wanted to bring this video to you because, guys, you know, this could happen again at any time. And it may be a lot worse. I mean, the great thing is right now we have our utilities, we have power, water, we have the internet, uh, we do have our vehicles, we have gas. And now a lot of us are sheltering in place. And then a lot of people, though, are still working. And you're able to get out even though there's a lot of health concerns around that. Now, guys, we've seen stocks run out of hand sanitizer, toilet paper, and firearms and ammunition and a lot of other things. Uh, it's At the beginning, we saw a run on basic canned foods, bread, produce. I mean, people were buying things up and they were in a panic. One of the things though, is we do have our distribution that continues to bring products to the store. You know, if you're out one day by the next morning, typically there's a lot of things back on the shelves. It may not be up to full, but they're definitely continuing to get things on the shelves. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about our distribution system. It is a very intricate, very complicated system. Now it starts out with the product. We have a product available. It's in the store. We can go buy it. But that product had to get to the store. And one thing that we live under now is called just in time. And what that means is, is that they restock those shelves every day. And so every day they're bringing in trucks, two or three times a week, and then you have people that are going back and putting the products out on the shelf. And it's a very efficient, a very streamlined system that allows for companies to make really decent profits, but it is vulnerable. And if we have any kind of disruption in the chain, in the distribution chain, uh, it can be catastrophic. And we're starting to see a little bit of that right now, because right now, I mean, hand sanitizer, this stuff, if you can find it, uh, can be expensive <laughs> and toilet paper is something that we need on a regular basis but the fact is is you we have a lot of manufacturing uh, that needs to be done and then those products taken to market now one big thing right now is that we have a shortage because of the huge demand this outside of our norm we have a shortage of drivers and that's those long haul drivers, the guys that go out for two or three days, they go from you know California all the way to New York with a lot of products that are needed, that people need. And all this is set up under a certain kind of system to where typically you can get those products. But when you have a huge demand on the system, it requires more drivers. Now, one of the problems is, is it's a lot more difficult to get long range, long haul drivers and employ them than it is to get one day trips. The guys that drive those little short trips in town or just to the town over from there or even the state and back that same day. And so we're, we're seeing a shortage, number one, of drivers. Now, hopefully those drivers will remain healthy. And that is a big plus. Another thing that was really great is when Trump went ahead and declared this a national emergency, he was able to get rid of a lot of the restrictions and regulations on these truck drivers. And so instead of having to go through a lot of paperwork and having to stop more often, uh, they have a little more leniency to be able to go a little bit farther, a little bit harder. Now that also affects safety on the roads, but it's with the roads less busy, it's not quite as big a factor. Okay, the second thing is we've got production. Now, unfortunately, manufacturing, a lot of it has been outsourced to other countries. And so while America was always huge in the manufacturing field, and we produce more goods than anyone uh, for the past hundred years, uh, unfortunately, we have, because of this global type mentality, we've taken our industries and we farmed them out. And so what's happening is, is we're waiting on goods from China, which is obviously the biggest producer of goods for the U.S. In fact, if China stops shipping stuff, Amazon and Walmart would close. And those are two of the biggest businesses 
in the country. And so if we're not getting those supplies, but even if we're making them here in the U.S., a lot of the raw materials are coming from other countries as well. And so we've got to make sure we have the raw materials to be able to make the product, but also we need to have labor. And with that, we have a labor force, especially in a company that produces a good, let's just say, like hand sanitizer, they have a certain amount that they produce every year because that's what the demand is. Now the demand is much higher. And so they really need more laborers to come in to fill the gap if they can get the raw materials. And so the companies that make the raw materials, the alcohol companies, because this is alcohol based, is they have to up their production. And also with whatever is in here, you know, whether it's aloe or some kind of, you know, lubricant or moisturizer, that company also has to up its production if they can get the raw materials. And so it's really a domino effect if one of those supply links is broken or it's, there's a downturn. And so again, guys, we live in a very fragile society. And so with that being said, because a lot of people are looking at this for the first time, if you're a hardcore prepper or someone that likes to be prepared, you know, a lot of this stuff you've already thought about. But if we're not careful, we go day to day, we get used to those things coming in, and we don't have ourselves ready when something like this happens. And guys, chances are it's going to happen again and again if we don't fix it internally. Guys, keeping things clean is definitely one thing that helps you stay healthy, especially around your home or your vehicle. And, you know, some of these things are some of the items that were, you know, bought up quick. And, of course, we've talked about toilet paper and hand sanitizer but also different type wipes, uh, antimicrobial wipes, or even baby wipes. Uh, these masks, which they've been back and forth about the mask, you know, are they effective, are they not? These are N95s, and this is what medical professionals use. And there's a lot of reasons to wear a mask, especially if you're sick. But even if you're not, guys, it keeps your hands away from your face, and that's one of the big things, touching surfaces and getting into your face. And then, of course, some bleach, and there are a lot of other things. One thing that they say is, is that this is not a really tough virus to kill on surfaces. You just got to do it. And so being really careful, of course, the gloves and your Band-Aids, you know, your normal things that you just need, which goes into your standard medications. If you're going to treat a sickness, you need to have some medications on hand, you know, whether it's Benadryl or, you know, pain reliever, even stuff for antacid, things like that, and having a good supply of these on hand at all times and different type cough syrups. With disruption of food distribution, that could be definitely something, you know, that you need to have some things put back to give you some time. And of course, first thing I always recommend are just regular canned foods that you're eating already. Now, you know, your produce and your meats and things like that, they may or may not be available, but you can have these for long term. And of course, if you have a freezer, you can freeze food. But also having like this pancake mix, ramen noodles, this is a big one that's been around for a long time. And then we get into your standard number 10 cans. These are sealed and they will last for 30 years. And there's a lot of stuff you can get for that. Now also, you know, MREs are great to have. Lifeboat food, this stuff is great. There's about 3000 calories in this bar. And then we have our standard dehydrated foods like Backpackers Pantry, um, you know, Mountain House Foods, and also Wise Foods. And these are made really for the outdoors, but they last a long time and you can keep them and just add water. But guys, again, if the food distribution points, if there's any choke anywhere, you need to have this stuff available. Now guys, if it was in just a local area, maybe even statewide, you can get assistance from all over the place. I mean, the, the federal government will come in, you can get help, but when it comes to a nationwide crisis, like we're seeing, and even a global crisis, that's where you need to be ready to take care of yourself. And guys, having water stocked up is just smart. You can only live three days without water. Uh, and then having a way to purify water if your water supply runs out. Now, one thing that was a big surprise is ammunition. Uh, the, you know, the ammunition started running out, people started buying it up, and the shelves just went dry within about just a few days. And, you know, a lot of people were concerned about possible civil unrest or about robberies and people breaking into homes. And so ammunition went, guys, you need to have a good supply of ammo. Uh, go ahead and get your supply of ammo put aside. And that way, when the prices go up and the supply dwindles, you'll have enough to get you through. Obviously, you need to think about firearms. Now, obviously, this is way more than you need. 
but having your firearm, making sure it's well maintained, making sure you get out and train with it. And having that ammunition is going to give you the ability to go out and train and have self-defense capability. And so this is a big part of protecting the things that you have. Because guys, when crisis hits, all of this kind of stuff gets bought up quickly. And the great thing is, if I need to, I can actually use this as a bartering tool. Uh, and the ammunition as well. And that's one of the things that's going to be a huge part is your bartering. Now guys, one thing that's a big possibility is your ATMs could close, uh, you know, especially with a lot of the financial turmoil that we're going through right now. Having cash, uh, cash is king. You know, you can use it for a lot of different things. It's recognized all over the place. And we always try to keep a nice supply of cash handy for emergency situations. But also we have a lot of silver put back. Now this is just a small bag. Uh, I have been buying silver for years and it's part of what preserves my wealth. And that's one thing that's really important about silver and gold. I've done a lot with money metals exchange and um, you know, those guys are great, great to deal with. They also do a lot of uh, survival supplies as well. And so that to me is one thing. They have a heart for you know people that are wanting to be prepared. So I like that. But uh, junk silver to me is the best. I do have a bunch of the American Eagles and Walking Liberties and stuff like that, but I like this junk silver. People know what it is. They can look at it. This is a quarter, it's silver, and they know it, so it does have some value to it. So guys, you may not be a doomsday prepper or even a survivalist. You may just want to have a few things put back, and that's really what this video is about, is really to motivate you to make sure that you do put some things back. Have at least a month of food always in your pantry, rotating it out. But I highly recommend really having about three months worth of food. Uh, it definitely gives you peace of mind. It keeps you from making rash decisions and you know that your family is gonna be taken care of. During this current crisis, you know, we still have utilities, we still have all those things. So we don't even have to address that. But in a serious grid down type situation, all those things could be a possibility. And at least you'll have yourself in decent position that you can tackle those things if they come along. Again, guys, we live in one of the greatest times on earth, but because we're so efficient, because we have so many systems in place to provide us with those things, you know, it is fragile. And if we have any break in that chain, it could definitely cause a lot of issues, not only with food production, with food distribution or supplies, uh, with countries all over the world that are supplying us with much needed and required things. You know, guys, you really need to make sure that you're prepared to face whatever comes. And so I encourage you during this time to be inspired, to make sure that you're prepped up. Don't be scared, be prepared. In the immortal words of my good friend, Southern Prepper, be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.